Anyway guys, we give you top 5 lists telling you what to get, which boots are the best, what to do, etc, etc, etc. But today, I'm here to give you a few pieces of advice on what not to do with your football boots, especially when it comes to these so-called life hacks for your boots. Now there are videos all over YouTube and we see a lot of pros doing all these little modifications to improve the performance or feel of their boots. And a lot of them actually work pretty well. But there are also some where you need to be a little bit extra careful because some of them straight up don't make any sense and others might actually straight up damage your football boots if you don't pay extra attention. So this is my top five boot hacks to avoid. Number five is using water repellent sprays like the Crab Protect here or other sneaker sprays on your leather football boots. Now the idea itself is actually a pretty good one. Treat the leather so it doesn't absorb any water. But using these here water repellent sneaker sprays might not work that well for two reasons. A, it wears off relatively quickly so you kind of quickly lose the effect of the water repellent thing. And also B, it might end up actually damaging your boots. You can get some discoloration and also if you're really unlucky it can go in and stiffen up the leather so it dries up and really breaks apart relatively quickly. You don't want to do that. What you want to do instead is get this. This is leather balm. And not only will it keep your leather softer and more durable and actually stronger, it will also, if you use it regularly, make it more water repellent. Boom. Hack number four to avoid is to fill out your boots with extra insoles or put stuff in the toe box or even wearing a couple of extra socks to kind of hack your way out of a boot that is slightly too big. Because yes, you might fill out some of the extra space in the toe box and get closer to the edge of the boot itself. But that doesn't necessarily make it better to play with and the boot will still be too big. I mean, I could also easily fill up a size 44 boot with five extra insoles, but that wouldn't make it better to play with because my foot would be sitting somewhere up here with my toe roundabouts here. And you kind of get what I mean. Instead, spend your time on getting the right size from the get-go so you don't have to do all of this as a last resort. Number three is the hot water trick. Wait, what, Jay? Uh, but, but, listen, hear me out. <laughs> because the hot water trick in itself works absolute wonders. I love it and I use it all the time when I have to soften up the upper of a boot. But the pitfall here is to use water that is too hot. Simply because it might end up melting the glue holding the boot together so you weaken the structural integrity of the boot and it risks breaking down faster. What you want to do instead is having this rule of thumb where you say that the water shouldn't be warmer than for you to be able to hold your hand under it. If you can do that, well you should be good in the hood. And of course, what you want to do is to remember to dry your boots properly after you've done the trick. And you're golden, my friend. Number two is taking out the laces to create your very own homemade laceless boot. But and I know it's very, very tempting because then you don't have to go out and buy the boot that's laces to begin with, which is also often very, very expensive. But hear me out here because laceless boots are built to give you some sort of lockdown in other ways than laces. And boots that come with laces from the get-go, well, they aren't. So you lose out on all lockdown and stability. So if you want a laceless boot, well, you should buy a laceless boot. Now, before we move on to number one, here are a few honorable, or should I call them shameful, mentions that you shouldn't do. One thing is to not washing and drying your boots properly, like throwing leather boots in the washing machine or tumbling dry your boots, which might lead them to ending up looking like this. You don't want that. And now that I have the cut off Magista here, do not cut off the color or the lace cover or anything else, just because you've seen the pros doing so. There's a reason the elements are there and you might lose your warranty if you end up doing it. So only cut off stuff if you're absolutely certain that this is how you want it. Now on the other side of the spectrum, I've actually seen people trying to create their own colors simply by cutting off a tennis sock and slapping it inside their boots. Uh, don't do that. It won't give you the sensation of a high cut boot. It's basically just a, a boot 
with a sock inside. It doesn't work. Now, number one is something that I've been scratching my head about lately, especially after seeing Coutinho and Homeless and Rüdiger cutting holes in their boots. And they probably do it in order to relieve a bit of pressure in areas where they might have a minor injury. And unless you have the very same injury, or a lot of football boots, or a lot of money for that matter, well, there's absolutely no point in you doing the same thing because not only will you ruin your boots, which is a bad thing, don't ruin your boots, kids, but also you might lose out on some structural integrity, especially if you cut a big hole in your heel. So just because you see the pros doing it doesn't mean that it's necessarily a good idea for you. And that is ultimately the main point in the video. Don't do stuff just because it looks cool or might sound like a clever boot hack. I mean, you can absolutely do these things and some of them might even work to some extent. Some of them absolutely don't, so don't do them. But personally, even though they might work, I would probably go for some of the alternatives instead and try and avoid these so-called hacks. For which of the boot tricks out there do you try and avoid? You should let me know in the comment section right down below. And then you can go and watch a video on how to properly clean your boots by clicking the link right down here when you're done. And also, you can even go and subscribe to our channel if you want to get even more tips on how to treat your football boots. You can click the green bubble over my head. And with that said, I'm signing off. Cheerio.